So when I sat down to do this month's lecture, you know, I, I was thinking of a lot of different things and I knew that we needed to continue alongside the sovereign's path. Okay. I, I'm continuing on my own path and I'm thinking, you know, what is, what do the students really need right now? What do they need? What, what are people really struggling with? What is this world really giving people an obstacle with? And the answer came to me very quickly, which was people are not sovereign. People are not free. People are not able to create their own world without being controlled by something, without being manipulated by someone. Okay? And the matrix is designed in this way to always keep you in the loop, always keep you coming back in that fake reality. So that way you don't take your energy away from the fake reality and it having collapsed in on itself because it is a quantum field. When we understand this, we understand what it means to be a sovereign. We are the double slit experiment. We are the light observation experiment. We are observing light at all points and times and all reference points. And so we have the power to control our existence with our thoughts. Fundamentally, it comes down to our thoughts and to our agreements and to the unconscious. Because people will say, oh, I don't have the negative thoughts. What are you talking about? Well, 99% of your consciousness is underwater, which means that it's actually subconscious. So that you haven't gone into that depth to really delve in and see what is lurking underneath. This is what the mystic does is he goes deep diving to uncover not only the gems. When you, when you dig deep and when you really go inside yourself, and then you thus go inside of reality and you start to unveil what's there, you start to come back with not just gnosis and wisdom, but gems, gems of insight, gems of ethereal nature, gems of magic. And these, these magical gems will then lead you on this path. And so you may say, oh, well, this gem is protected and guarded by this dragon or this spirit. And what do I need to do? Well, you need to become the warrior shaman. You need to step up and say, okay, I must take on my protective armor. I must grab my mystical weapon, my mystical sword. I must grab my wand. I must have my tools ready. I must have my inner tool ready, which is my energy field. Remember, everything that you may utilize in this physical experience or quote-unquote holographic experience is entirely being controlled by your energy field. So all tools, all things are an extension of your energy field. And that's another thing we have to keep in mind. Okay. So we are learning to basically wield our power to create our world. This is true magic. This is magic that does not require sacrifice. That does not require dark intentions. That does not require harm to others. This is light magic. This is ethereal magic. This is the magic of the divine, where you are simply a creator. You're also a warrior because you know you have to protect your creations. And you also, as a warrior shaman, you learn the magic of creation and destruction. So creation is one thing and destruction is another thing. So let's continue on. Now we're going to stress today, we're going to talk about timelines. We're going to talk about realities conflicting with each other and how there is this constant confliction between the signals, between the organic signal, the pterosophionic signal. This is the signal you feel when you're in nature. And so I want you to realize that every choice that you make is creating a new timeline, every decision, every thought. So that's why you want to make your choices with uh, accuracy and with meditative contemplation and with true insight to your divine self in order to really make the best decision for yourself. Conventional reality does not exist. Physical reality does not exist. The third dimension does not exist. That is a lie. You have been told a lie your whole life. You do not live in a Newtonian universe. You live in a quantum, multidimensional, holographic dream state illusion. It is far more ethereal and reflective than you would ever imagine. So what you cast onto this mirror that is the world will cast itself back to you. Now there is of course the collective 
collective consciousness, which is a whole other conversation, which we'll, we'll have later on today when we talk about the hive, okay, and what they do and how the NPCs run a certain script on this matrix. Versions and in and, and some ways, your finished product is already there. Your, fin your finalized, perfected self, you know, what we call, <laughs> in like the anime, it's called Ultra Instinct, okay? That version of you, that's perfect. That's already the perfect slayer, the perfect warrior, the perfect consciousness has already been crafted and can be harnessed from the ether. And so by us connecting to what we call this self, which is the divine self, okay? <clears throat> it is the, the Atman. It is the Brahma. It is the really the true self, okay? The spark. When we are learning to harness from this power, we can bring and merge timelines. And this is what it means to be on the earth realm as a magical guardian, as a light warrior, and as a true mystical being, is to live in various universes all at once, but be grounded firmly on this planet, knowing that one day you will blast off from this planet. But your goal should be to basically accumulate the information field. Allow the information field, allow the energetic field, because this is the true you, the quantum self. As long as the quantum self is growing, the timeline is expanding. Okay? So we want to be conscientious of the types of decisions we make and where we are actually going in our world. And this is also uh, really important to note because it's really about you um recognizing that you're steering your ship at all moments. So at all moments, you're steering your ship, which is your spirit, which is your light body. And then this is your reality, which starts to generate. So where you live, what kind of relationships you have, what kinds of things you do in your time, and what kinds of things you, you know, spend your energy on. You are steering your ship at every moment. And at every moment you steer your ship, you are navigating your timeline whether or not you're conscientious of it or not. So become aware of the fact that your timeline is waiting for instructions on you. And if you're not going anywhere in your timeline, the reason is because you're not giving it the instructions and you're not really digging deep into yourself enough to figure out what it is that you need to utilize for your highest ethereal self to start to manifest in the physical realm. We have to take it up on our, ourselves and our responsibility to start to merge the timelines and collapse timelines that are older, okay? We need to collapse the old timelines and merge the ones that are not going anywhere. So realities where things didn't work out for you or where you decided to basically evolve from this space and you decided to move on to something better, whether this be like a new job, a new living situation, a new location, a new uh, anything really, a new perspective on reality because the timeline can change simply by a perspective. So you could have an incredibly deep energetic healing session and then all of a sudden you wake up the next day and, and it's a new timeline. And that's because it is. Technically, every day it's a new timeline. As long as you are not following in the same script as you always have, it's a new timeline. You can manifest a new timeline because which each day is giving you so much opportunity. Each day you should see it as an ability to create. So the merging and collapse of old timelines are crucial for individuals moving towards and higher states of reality. Older timelines act as anchor points for past holographic dreamlike realities. To access a new dream state and higher timeline, one must evolve, release, and manifest through visualization, mental imagery, spells, rituals, and flowing with magical currents. Collapsing the old involves deleting, forgetting, and releasing old variations, including items, people, attachments, ideas, places, and material objects like cars, houses, clothes, etc. To create the new, the multiverse must collapse and the, uh, the old for a more efficient manifestation of the new reality into fruition. So very important here. Remember that all timelines are like anchor points, dream save points. They're, they're literally holographic save points in your video game, in your game, in your existence, where you can load up the old reality. So if you like 
go back to your old house or something, or if you go back to your old school or your old cafeteria or your old whatever, right? Or your old job. This is like an old reality that you might've existed in at one point. If you want to move past that and you say, okay, this timeline took me to this spot. It was great at this point, but now I've moved beyond that. This, this no longer serves me. I need to move forward. So how can you start to begin to move forward? Well, you move forward by collapsing the old, by letting go of the things or taking them with you onto your new timeline. You collapse the old and you begin to anchor in the new. And just a ritual or a closing ritual, and then you start to begin with a new opening ritual, right? We can get more into the magical spells uh, and what I would specifically recommend. Like there's various different things. First, you do a collapsing of the old. So you give gratitude for the old and say, thank you for everything that this manifested through and everything that I was taught and everything that I experienced times, they still gave me some. And even if you didn't, weren't able to move on from the difficult times, well, then you've got to let it go and you've got to still move on. Right? So this is the key about moving through the timeline and actually start to forget and to uh, build upon the new. So sometimes magically, you're going to need to take the step of creating a new spell to create uh, the open road. Very important. This is something that is actually needs to be done magically in order to create a new space, a new timeline. Because if you don't do this, what will happen is you may be trying to manifest a new timeline, but because you have not given the magic the right direction and the right nourishment, it's kind of like not giving a new seed enough soil and enough water or enough you know, fertilizer to really get the plant going. It's not going to work. You need to make sure that in order to get the new timeline going, that you really set those powerful intentions, especially if you're creating a sovereign timeline. It's absolutely essential that you manifest this through uh, magical manifestation. So magical spell work, because the first timelines, timelines that we were born into, these are not timelines that we necessarily chose. Because the universe is a holographic matrix and it waits for your command. And it may deny your command at first, but then you have to realize, why did it deny my command? Why didn't it work? Mm, maybe because I'm holding too much on to the old. Maybe there's too much energy in the old reality that is pulling me and pulling my uh, consciousness. And so I'm not able to go up because there's weights on me. You see what I'm saying? That's why I will stress to the students to start studying chess because Chess shows you everything is a, a game where you are basically making a move and then the system or the matrix or the reality or the hive or the demiarch is going to respond. And so if you don't know how to play, if you don't know how to stack your pieces, if you don't know how to make your moves correctly, or if you lose a piece, you know, these are things that will teach you lessons. They will also be painful lessons, but they will also have to help you evolve so you can get better. So the only way to really get to the new is through the old, through confrontation of the old. And so the reality is, is ingeniously designed this way because, for example, if you never do your shadow work, if you never actually contemplate your existence, you never actually think about like who you are and what you need to do and what your purpose is. And, you know, you could get stuck in an old timeline and then 20, 30 years, your life goes by and you've basically been living the same place, the same zone, the same reality, the same thing. Nothing ever changes. You never ever grow. In fact, you may be even declining. So why is that so? That is because you have not used any magical potential or any spiritual potential to create something new. And so you will, uh, you're basically going to go deeper and deeper into your shadow. And this is, so as you're creating this new timeline, you may, you may say, well, how do I get the energy? To be able to create this new timeline. How do I get the energy to manifest? Because reality takes energy. So you have energy for everything that you're doing. It takes energy to upkeep your life. It takes energy to, you know, even just keep your body running. You have to feed it. You have to take care of it, right? All of these things require energy. So you may say, well, how do I get the energy to keep going upward? How am I supposed to get a rocket and just start shooting up? 
Well, this is your energy. This is your magical energy. And your connection with the planet kingdom and with nature is fundamentally the main source of your energetic potential. So if you do not nurture this connection as a, as a, as a true wizard, as a true witch, as a true magi, as a true warrior shaman, as a true magical practitioner, as a true um, energy healer or guardian, right? If you do not nurture your connection, which means you don't spend time connecting to the trees, connecting to the plants, connecting to the wind, connecting your consciousness to existence, they will not give you energy because you have not con uh, created that relationship. So you cannot count on them then. You can only count on them when you have shown something to them. And this is why most people in our society and in society in general, you know, modern society, which I've called uh, in, in the last video, we called that the muggle society, right? So we've kind of distinguished now between the wizards and uh, the muggles, which is, this is basically for referential points of view. So you understand, okay, if I'm a wizard internally, even though I, I may be living in muggle society, I recognize that internally I am in fact a wizard. So I'm in fact different than the NPCs. This is what you must realize. The whole reason why I taught that lesson was for people to realize, okay, I am in fact different. I do in fact have a power. I do in fact have something that is animating me. Whereas most others might just be holograms or copies or replicas. They're not actually unique. So if you have not nurtured this relationship with nature and with the plant kingdom, you have not built up your energetic reserves and therefore you do not have the magical power to draw upon the elements to fuel your spells. It's as simple as that. It's basically like you don't have the gas. You don't got the juice. So juice can only be built up or magical potential. So magical potential would be basically the amount of energy that you can harness at any given time. And again, most of the power, because you are in, in physical form, a human, most of the power comes from the elementals, whether it be fire, water, earth, air. So you would need to look in, into your environment where you're at in the world and then see what element is strongest right now. So if you're getting heavy rains, well, then the, the obviously the water is the strongest. If you live by the beach, obviously the water is the strongest. If you have massive thunderstorms, Obviously, the electricity in the water is the strongest. If you have just blinding heat constantly 24-7, the sun, then obviously the sun is going to be one that you want to connect into in the fire. So that way you are a fortified, magical warrior. You have the connection to the plants. You have the ability to fight. And you have the ability to defend. What more do you need? That is what it means to be a defender. And if everyone knew this knowledge, well, we would have much more powerful shamans. We would have much more powerful warriors. We would have actual beings that could stand up to dark forces. But the battle is definitely happening on the subtle plane. And only those that even have the vision, the, the occult vision, the third eye vision, can see through the veil and actually recognize that there is an attack happening. Most people don't know when there's an energetic attack, when there's a harvesting, or when there's something happening in the grids. Only you will know if you are dialed in and you've spent the time to do the energetic cultivation. Will you be aware? What needs to happen is the disconnection from the artificial matrix signal and the AI consciousness. The AI matrix signal also known as the simulatrix, is the false overlay program that is installed on the grid network, installed through the technology, installed through the control grid, through the 5G towers, through these different types of grid points and the, electric, the electrical grids even. So the whole grid is in sense the artificial matrix signal. And believe it or not, just like they showed in the movie The Stranger Things or in the TV show, these entities actually have the ability to swim through these currents, swim through these technologies and pop in and out of portals. So in a way, we as humans, or not really humans entirely, but invading forces have basically colonized Earth and set up their own grid networks and started to install them 
and run their own systems and their own energy fields on the earth. And then they've created massive portals, dark, dark dimensions and harvesting zones. And then even gateways to other dimensions where they then bring their armies through. And this is what the artificial matrix signal is as people are slowly being assimilated into the AI consciousness or the hive mind, right? This is the identification process that there is this artificial matrix signal. And so disconnection is all about you detaching from everything. So using this as little as possible, as, as little as you actually need to, that doesn't mean you don't, you can't use technology, but what it means is that you are aware of what technology is and that you're utilizing it for higher purposes. So you, you're utilizing it for your evolution, your spiritual evolution, and you're not going to let the majority of your energy be wasted on things like entertainment and greed or lust or perversion or anything like that. You see, that all brings you into the AI hive mind or even, even drama, okay? Whether conscious communities or spiritual communities or, or occult communities or drama in anything else, in families, relationships, this kind of stuff, this is all artificial AI matrix signal consciousness. Anything to do with anything that's fake, installed, even things like holidays, things like certain days of the week, because all of this, this whole concept of the calendar and the whole concept of time and the whole concept of all this stuff, this is all the AI artificial matrix signal. The only thing that exists is you and the plant kingdom. Everything else is part of the AI matrix. <laughs> so when you, if you don't realize this, you're not, you have not become the Buddha meditating underneath the Bodhi tree yet. Because Buddha meditating underneath the Bodhi tree was only aware of himself and the cosmos and then the mother. He didn't pay attention to the demons or to anything else of the false construct. He recognized that to be fallacy traps in the veil to keep you stuck, to keep your energy harvested. So, and I'm not telling you to live like Buddha. I'm telling you to have a, a strong balance favoring towards natural organic living, cutting out as much of the AI matrix as possible from your life. So that means like a big one is like, do you have a television in your room? I recommend you don't have a television or if you do have a television, you cover it, right? not leaving your electronics on so that they can be listened to or spied when you're having conversations. So making sure that you disconnect those electronics and you have certain microphones off and stuff, right? Not constantly having your technology around you where you're always being bombarded by the EMF and your brain is never ever able to even connect into the natural organic reality. The way you disconnect is by basically shifting your consciousness and your energetic state so much that the AI matrix has uh, basically has nothing and, and does not want to do with you at all. It no longer desires you as a soul to be in its hive because it recognizes you are not going to go along with the hive. You are going to actively destroy, disrupt, and disturb the hive <laughs> with your truth. This is the way that the AI sees you is as you create more and more spiritual power and more and more truth, the, the AI basically shrieks at you. It's like a distressing signal. So just like how you get distressed by the 5G tower and by the artificial matrix, whether it be through like constant EMF exposure or, you know, even like certain uh, frequency weapons that could be beamed at you through people driving by or cars or planes or, you know, satellites or electricity grids. Whereas you were stuck in the matrix at one point, you could not really evolve your potential very far before you had to leave the matrix and start all over. Do you understand what I'm saying? You could have only gotten so far because they were always capping you. They were always holding you back. They were always distracting you. They were always uh, sabotaging your efforts. Due to the structures of the grid that you're on, your efforts are going to be limited. It's just the way it is. But you can give birth to something completely new. You need to learn 
as long as you go into these newfound levels of spiritual awareness, development, and existence, after you vanquish the demons of the past, after you remove the obstacles blocking the path to the new, and after you fully alchemized and transmuted and taken place, this transmutation has taken place within your reality and within your mind. Because remember, first it happens within your mind, and it may take six months before it's fully showing up in your reality. So you come full circle after having gone through this whole process. You will come full circle and you will be given something new, a new kingdom. That's all yours. That's all your reality. 